Algie. It's come at last, the promotion I've been waiting for. From the United States Naval Reserve Bureau in Washington. Ha deedle dee deedle dee dum deedle deedle dee dum. Yes, sir. As of this day and date, pursuant to the directive herein, to be acknowledged in triplicate, you are no longer the oldest, grayest haired ensign in the U.S. Navy. You know perfectly well the only reason I haven't received my extra stripe before this is because... The Navy ran out of war surplus gold braid. Yes. <laughs> I mean, no. Now see here, Margie. I was only teasing, Dad. You know I'm proud of you. Congratulations. Well, thanks, Margie. You know, a, a thing like this makes a man feel pretty good. Um, I received an official letter myself this morning from the Charity League. Oh? They make you an officer, too? Well, not exactly. As a matter of fact, the Albrights aren't in very good standing at the moment. Seems you forgot to send in your $50 pledge. My pledge? I don't remember. Let me see that. This is addressed to you. It's, this is your pledge, not mine. Well, technically, yes, Dad, but, well, everybody was giving something, and Mrs. Todd pledged 50, and she's the wife of one of your bosses, and I didn't want you to look bad, and... And so you want good old Dad to kick in with the money, eh? Well, the answer is no. This is your pledge and your responsibility. But, Dad... The trouble with you is you think the charity comes from the pocketbook instead of the heart, and somebody else's pocketbook at that. Well, don't get in a tizzy. It's only money. Margie, I'm surprised. Is that all charity means to you? No personal sacrifice, just money? What about the helping hand in time of distress, the world brotherhood of man? Now, wait, Dad. Let's not involve the United Nations for $50. Why, even the Boy Scouts have pledged themselves to do a good turn every day to help someone in time of distress. That's what I call charity. That's what I would like to see you do. Well, for obvious reasons, I can't join the Boy Scouts. But as far as a helping hand goes... Hello. Anybody home? Morning, Margie. Ready for our tennis date? Well, what's the matter? Well, I couldn't be in the doghouse already. I just got here. I was just giving Margie a lecture on charity, which is something I wouldn't expect you to know anything about, Freddie. No, I wouldn't say that. Every Tuesday morning, I go down and collect my unemployment check, don't I? Dad, what's up with you, Vance? You don't want me to be in bad standing with a charity league, do you? When you can show me that you've helped out someone in distress without money for just once, then you'll be in good standing with me. You know, Margie, sometimes I think your father is emotionally unstable where money's concerned. No, Freddy, he's right. And if I want him to be proud of me, I've got to help my fellow man when he's in trouble. Well, then you can start with me. I paid a buck down to reserve a court, and I might have trouble getting it back. Charity comes from the heart, not the pocketbook. I'm going out and do a good turn to the first person in distress I meet. I'll show Dad the kind of daughter I am. Well, wait a minute. What about the court I reserved? Find some needy tennis player and give him two sets for free. <laughs> My name is Margie Albright, and I'm in big trouble because I've got to help somebody else who's in trouble. So please let me help you. You'll really be helping me, honestly. Nobody can help a girl who's on her honeymoon without a husband. Did you start with a husband? Oh, yes. Cliff and I were married at his home base before we came here. He's an Air Force pilot. A flyer, I see. And from force of habit, he took off. Oh, a nice, understanding person. And I just got to talk to somebody or I'll bust. Good, good. Well, my name is Helen Seeley. That's my married name. And Cliff brought me to New York on our honeymoon. And then all of a sudden, right after we got here, he started acting funny. You mean funny peculiar, not funny ha-ha. He began staying out nights, and then every night, and refused to say where he'd been or what he was doing. And then I, I found a hotel key in his pocket. I guess going through a husband's pockets isn't what it's cracked up to be. Did you investigate this hideaway? Oh, no, I couldn't spy on him. That wouldn't be nice. But I've just got to know the truth, even if it's another woman. Now do you see my problem? I certainly do. Helen, I'm going to leave my scruples double-parked and do a little spying. What was that hotel and room number? Well, at room 519 West Park Hotel. Well, that's just across the way here. Now, you sit tight until I get back. I'm going to get the range on your fly boy, and if he's up to any tricks, we'll shoot him down in flames. <laughs> Look, 
with Major Grady, sir. You are in the intelligence section, so why can't you be intelligent? I'm on my honeymoon and I can't even speak to my wife, let alone... Well, anyway, it's murder. Look, I know it's tough trying to combine a honeymoon with a secret mission, but it'll all be over in a couple of days. If I don't tell my wife why I ran out on her, so will my marriage. Look, Cliff, the very reason you were selected to make this top secret test was because you were a newlywed. No foreign agent would ever suspect you had anything else on your mind. Those foreign agents are so right. Okay. But you'll get the call from the airfield any minute now. And then all you have to do is drop your high-explosive rocket on a new bomb defense test shelter. The instruments will record exactly how it stands up, and then you can power dive right back into Helen's loving arms. She'll forgive you when she knows you've been on secret duty all this time. Major, you know a lot about explosives, but you don't know nothing about women. <laughs> over any minute now. Meanwhile, it's my duty to enforce strict security on Captain Seeley, better known as Lover Boy, except to Helen. I think I'll go in the other room and catch a shave. I'll see you. Hello? Who's this? Oh, yes, Sergeant. He's here. I'll put him on. It's your crew chief. He wants to report on the plane you're going to fly. To him, you can talk. Hello, Mac. Yeah, it's good to hear your voice. Now, they're treating me strictly cloak and dagger. I can't even talk to my own wife. Wow, that's the best plane in the outfit in my book. She just about flies herself. I think... Uh, hang on just a minute, will you, Mac? Who is it? Faith, none, tis the men. You know, the plane is toughest for jabbers. All right, come on in. As I was saying, Mac, she's a beauty. Real gone. I fell in love with that streamlined baby the first time I set eyes on her. She made me forget home and family. <laughs> You could say that again, Mac, but I wouldn't trust her with anyone but you. And I know she'll be in good hands until the big show. And brother, then watch the action. Oh, and that little doll peels off. Wow. <laughs> a strip teaser. I know, I know, but take it easy. I'm waiting for a phone call. <laughs> oh, you'll see how she acts when the heat's on. Yeah, she's a living dream on that runway when she starts to take off. Ow! What are you trying to do? Sure, and I want to catch all the dirt, big <laughs> Say, Cliff, do you have an extra blade? Hey, Grady, get her out of here, will you? She's flipped. What's going on around here, anyway? Who are you? Sure, and I'm the maid, your worship. She's not the regular maid. You're a pony. <laughs> Did you see him? I saw him all right. Helen, all men are beasts. And, and it's another woman. Worse than that. Brace yourself. It's a strip teaser. A strip teaser? He said she's really something when she peels off. A living dream on the runway. Oh, Clemmy, how could you? Now, Helen, crying isn't going to do any good. You've got to do something about that peeled hussy. I'm going right straight home to my mother. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, honey, I know how you feel. But you love Cliff, don't you? Well, then he's worth fighting for, isn't he? Yes, but how can you fight against a woman like that? Well, first I'll find out who she is. Then we can figure the right way to handle her. How can I reach you tonight? Here's the number where I'm staying. Margie, what are you going to do? I'll think of something. Now, let's see. His weakness seems to be burlesque girls. <laughs> Going somewhere, Margie? Uh, hi, Dad. I was just looking for you. I very seldom spend my evenings out in the hallway. Where are you going? Well, I... Look, Dad, let's just say I'm practicing what you preach this morning. I'm lending a helping hand to someone in distress. In that outfit, I'm afraid you'll find very few charity cases at the store club. 
Now, why don't you admit you've got a date? Okay, Dad, have it your way. Well, I do have a date in a funny sort of way. Oh, well, if it's that funny, it must be Freddy. Why doesn't he call for you? Is he afraid I'll wring his neck like I've always wanted to? <laughs> you know, Freddy. Well, bye, Dad. Don't wait up for me. I guess I must have gotten into the wrong room by mistake. <laughs> Mind if I rest a minute? Uh, no, I guess it's all right. I guess I must have turned my ankle last night when I fell off the runway. The runway? Yeah. I'm a strip teaser. Margie, the flaming fireball, they call me. <laughs> well, I'm glad to meet you, Margie. I'm sure I'm not the first one you've met, you rascal, you. I know how you fly boys are. Come on, fess up. I bet you know a lot of us peeled tomatoes, don't you? Oh, no, 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 on the level. You see, I'm married. Oh, come on, knock it off, cloud jockey. When the maid cleaned my room today, she told me all about you. The maid? Yeah, she told me about hearing you on the phone telling some joker all about your streamlined baby and how she looked on the runway taking off. Oh, so that's it. That maid really is an oddball. She almost swept me right into the carpet. But I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about some... Yeah? About what? I'm, I'm sorry. I can't tell you. I, I can't even tell my wife. Well, I should hope not. Uh, I mean, wives just don't understand their husbands, do they? But I think you and I are going to get along just dandy. I'm crazy about flyers. If your ankle's all right now, I'll see you out, Margie. Well, well. Who's your charming visitor, Cliff? Oh, I'm sort of a colleague of his secret girlfriend, huh, Cliffy boy? Uh, she got in here by mistake. I'll see you to your own room, Margie. No, that won't be necessary. I'll show the lady to her door. Well, I can make it alone, handsome. Here's my phone number. It's a theater, that is. Carlton 39873. Just ask for Margie, and we'll double date with Cliffy and his girlfriend. I'll be waiting. <laughs> All right, who's the dame? I told you, she got in here by mistake. Well, don't look at me like that. We were only talking. She looks familiar. I've seen her somewhere before. Probably right around here in the hotel. She's got a room on this floor. She said she heard about me from the maid. That's it. The maid. She's the one who poses the maid this morning. You mean you think she's a foreign agent? What else is she sneaking around your room for? Okay, we'll play it her way. That'll give us a chance to find out who she's working with. Give her time to get to this number and then phone her. Tell her we're going to keep that little double date she suggested. Oh, but Grady... That's I... an order! Evening, Mr. Albright. Is Margie in? Of course she's not in. She's out with you. <laughs> Where is she? Well, how should I know? That's what I came to find out. Oh, but she said she had a date with you. She was all dressed in her snazziest evening gown. Mr. Albright, you don't think there's another... another man in her life? What do you mean, another man? It would be the first. Well, why should she lie to me? She's old enough to go out with a pea brain like you if she wants to. <laughs> I've got to find out what she's up to. She acted so peculiar when she left. Dad? Well, well, well. I see you're home early for change. Did you have a nice time with Freddy? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Lovely time. Oh, splendid. Splendid. Uh, what did you and Freddy do? Oh, what did we do? Well, now, what does any girl do when she goes out with Freddy? She gets bored and rigid. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Freddy can cause a lot of excitement sometime. Like now. Freddy! Have you been hanging in there since this morning? Margie, you've been carrying on with another man. I insist that you reveal the identity of your clandestine amour so that I can belt him in the chops. That's my boy. Young lady, as your father, I demand to know the truth. Would you believe it if I told you I met a girl crying her eyes out in Central Park and she told me she suspected her husband was leaving her for a strip teaser and I went to spy on him to find out who she is so I could break it up and get her husband back safe and practically sound? No. I didn't think you would. Okay, make up your own story. 
Now, you listen to me. Are you going to tell me who this man is, or am I going to have to use force? Man? What man? Dad, I give you my word, there is no man in my life. Now, that's all I can say at the moment. Hello? Hey, this is Margie. Oh, hello, Cliffy boy. <laughs> Why, sure, I can meet you at the hotel. Are you in your room? Okay, Cliffy, it's a date. A double date. Oh, and give my regards to Handsome. So there's no man in your life, eh? Margie, you're not leaving this house tonight. Now, wait, Dad, take it easy. I've tried to tell you the truth, but you won't believe me. I'm trying to help someone in distress like you told me I should, but you won't believe that either. So now all I can do is ask you to trust me. Trust you? Yes, I'm asking you to trust in me the way a father should. I've never done anything in my life that either of us could be ashamed of. And I give you my word, I'm not going to do anything now to make me unworthy of you. Oh, you'll be glad you trusted me, Dad. I'm only trying to make you proud of me. Oh, I feel a little ashamed. How about you? Me too. Margie's a swell girl. Oh, the best. Yes, sir, she's the kind of a daughter that a father can trust. Why, the idea of Margie doing anything wrong is ridiculous. Fantastic. Why, you could trust her with your very life, back into the limit. Why, she'd never let you down. She's one in a million. But who is this Cliffy guy? That's Cliff's room there. I don't think it's right for a wife to spy on her husband. I'm doing the spying. You're just going to be in on the finish. I'll leave the door open a crack, and when the three of us come out to meet Cliff's burlesque gal, you follow us, okay? Thank you, sir. Well, this is it. In a couple of hours, everything will be all over, and I'll be back in the honeymoon business. I'll be glad when it's all over, too. I'm tired of playing nursemaid to a caged tiger. <laughs> Uh-oh, that must be Margie. What are we going to do about her? You get going out to the field. Foreign agents are my department. If I'm lucky, she'll lead me right to the brains of the gang. Get going. Well, aren't you the eager beaver? Now, look, Margie, I gotta get someplace on the double up. Big date. Major, uh, Tom Grady will tell you all about it. Margie, come in. I've been waiting for you. Hey, what's the idea, handsome? Are we going with Cliffy Boy? You're not. You're my date for tonight. <laughs> Come on. We've got to follow Cliff. Scratch one wall. <laughs> That'll teach him to lay his hands on Margie. Come on. Guards running the field. There are two foreign agents on the loose. Tell the men to shoot first and ask questions later. All I can say is this is a weird place for a strip teaser to have a date. Look, Margie, there's a plane. Hey, that's a plane taking off. I thought this was an old civilian airfield, but that's an Air Force job. Uh, so was the guy that Margie was following, but come on, she can't be very far away. All right, now hurry. The show's over. Where's the rest of the gang? Major Grady. Helen, what in the devil are you doing here? Well, I came with Margie. We're following Cliff to catch him with that woman he left me for. Oh, for the lover. Cliff is in that plane that just took off. He's on a mission, Helen. 
<laughs> and you thought he was with another woman, huh? <laughs> you mean Cliff wasn't two or three timing, Helen? Of course not. He's going to drop rocket missiles on that old shack over there. We're testing a new type of protective material for defense installations. Well, Helen, it looks like we made a military boo-boo. We'll get that straightened out after the test. But for the moment, I'm going to have to place you girls under technical arrest. But we're not spies. No, of course not. But there are two foreign agents around here someplace, and I've got to find them. Don't you girls budge from this spot. When Cliff makes his run, that old shack across the field is going to be blown to bits. <laughs> going to blow it up, huh? Right. Now, you girls stay right here. If you see anything suspicious, yell for help. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, I mean, yes, sir. My dad's a Navy man. Isn't this exciting? We're under military arrest, and there are foreign agents on the prowl, and... Anybody got the license number of that truck? All right, Margie, where's your secret lover? And don't try to lie out of it. We've followed you ever since the minute you left home. Well, I'm not going to try to explain anything now. You'd better get Dad out of here before the two of you get shot. Shot? <laughs> Me get shot? Yes, Dad. Major Grady thinks you're foreign agents, and he's out there now looking for you with a gun. This place is crawling with armed guards. This is a restricted military area. Military area? Holy jumping MPs. Brady, Brady, you know what that means? Yeah, we get shot. Shot? That's nothing. If we get caught, I'll lose my promotion in the Naval Reserve. I might even get busted to seamen second class. I'm getting out of here. Dad, wait. There's going to be an explosion. Uh, not unless they catch me. Come on, Freddy. <laughs> Stop wherever you are on fire. <laughs> Who could have surrendered? You are not. The Navy's never surrendered to the Army yet. Look. Come on. We can hide in that shack. Did, did you get them? No, but don't worry. The place is surrounded by guards. They won't get away. Cliff's about ready to start his first rocket attack on the old shack. Come on. Oh, isn't this exciting? What are all those gadgets for? Oh, well, this is a control panel. See, it's connected to instruments installed in the test shelter underneath the shack. Now, they'll send us the results when Cliff lets go his rockets. Uh, oh, oh, what do you suppose this layout is? I don't know. Looks like a built-in bomb shelter. Concrete walls, steel door. Bomb shelter? Free! That's it! They're bombing us! Oh, I'm gonna get out of here! The needles have gone crazy. There must be somebody in that shack. Well, who on earth would be messing around a shack they're firing rockets at? Dad! He's in that shack with Freddy! What are you talking about? Hurry, call the plane! Tell Cliff to stop or he'll kill two innocent men! It's too late. He's fired the big one. <laughs> Now, now, Margie, there's still a chance. If that test shelter stands up like we think it will, what... Look! <laughs> Cease fire. I hereby resign my commission. admit I followed through when I set out to help someone in distress. Are you proud of me now? Am I back in good standing? Yes, Margie. I've learned a lesson this time. I'm not going to give you any more advice. Oh, but I want you to advise me, Dad. I got a letter from the Junior League, and we girls are starting a charity drive, and where are you going? I'm going to do myself a favor this time. I'm going to write you a check. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's my little Margie. Thank <laughs> you.